everybody, how are we all? Hope you're all doing grand. Welcome back to another Midweek Meals. I haven't filmed one of these what feels like the longest time. Um, I love filming these Midweek Meal videos and I really hope you guys enjoy them. Whenever I do upload them, there's always such lovely comments, so I'm bringing them back. So I'm gonna film, I think, five meals this week, Monday through till Sunday. I'm gonna pick the camera up as and when. They're all gonna be vegetarian meals all gonna be super tasty, packed full of flavor, really easy, not gonna take a long time to cook, and just really delicious that you can make for yourself, for whoever you're isolating with, with your family, and they are amazing. So let's kick off. Today is Monday. If you could like this video and you could subscribe, that would be absolutely amazing. Just click the little button down there, it helps me out a ton. Tonight we're having pasta bake. I'm so excited. Let me show you what you need. Okay, so this is the ingredients for our pasta bake. We'll be using fasilli pasta because we love it and it's so tasty. So that's gonna be our pasta. We're gonna do like a nice green veg sauce. We've got a can of chopped tomatoes, some passata, two courgettes, one leek. We've got some broccoli as well. We're gonna chop up some onion with some pepper. In terms of like spices, we're gonna do some oregano or oregano and chili with some garlic. And then to top it off, we're gonna do some grated mozzarella and cheddar and some breadcrumbs. So it's all really affordable ingredients and it's gonna be delicious. So let's get cracking. Okay, so I'll first start off by peeling a white onion and this is my little onion trick. If you slice it with the root on and then half and half down the middle, it slices of the onion in a really good sized chunks. It makes it super quick. And it's really good for those people out there who don't like chopping. And then I chop up the leeks. Again, these don't have to be too fine. And then I just pop them into a high sided saucepan with a little bit of olive oil and I just sweat them down. and then I just season them with some Himalayan rock salt. And then it's time for the courgettes. So once I've washed them, I just halve them and then chop them up into slices. And then I add one teaspoon of easy chili into the pan. The chili just makes this really, really tasty. Once the onions and leeks have then softened, I add in the courgette and then it's time to do the pepper. Again, I just pop this into slices and then add that into the pan. I also added some broccoli in as well, and then I added the chopped up garlic. Again, I add the garlic just at this time so it doesn't burn, and then I added in some oregano, and then the chopped tomatoes. All the measurements will be left in the description box. And then I added around half a pack of passata. And while that was all blipping away, I then cooked the facility pasta to packet instructions. It takes around, mm, I'd say like 10 minutes usually, but I cooked it for around seven, and then I let it finish off in the oven. By this time the sauce will be nice and thick and it's time to add your fasilli into your sauce. It's just a really simple, nice chili garlic tomato sauce guys. It's really good, quite similar to a ratatouille sauce and it is just delicious. I transferred that to a roasting tin and then I topped it with my two types of cheese. So I did the leftover mature cheddar, shredded mozzarella, and then I finished it off with some panko breadcrumbs and that just gave the most amazing cheesy crispy topping. I popped that into a preheated oven around 200 degrees for around 20 minutes until the top was nice and golden brown. As you can see, there's a cheeky little garlic bread going in there as well. And that is the finished pasta bake. Lovely, rich, tomatoey, cheesy with a nice crispy crust. And oh, it is so, so good. Proper, perfect comfort food. Okay, we're gonna go in for the taste test. Pasta bake, probably one of my favorite things to eat. Absolutely delicious. Let's go on for a try. And it is delicious. Mm. Okay, so it's Tuesday. Do choose the wet hair as always just gave me a haircut. <laughs> we are having tacos for dinner. We're having soft shell corn mince and pepper tacos. It's one of our favorites. We absolutely love it. We're gonna have it with coleslaw, salad, and some crispy potatoes. It's gonna be delicious. The kit is from Aldi, and I'm gonna show you everything you need. Okay, so this is everything you are gonna need. This is the soft shell, soft shell taco kit. That's quite a mouthful. I got this from Aldi, but I know there's lots of different variants on this, so that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use some corn mince, some salad to pop in the tacos, and we're gonna use one large white onion, three cloves of garlic, two potatoes to roast those in the oven, and then have it with some coleslaw and some peppers and that's everything you're gonna need. Okay, so I started off by slicing up the potatoes. Now, I slice these with the skin on just because I think it adds a really nice texture. I first slice them into discs and then into cubes and pop those in a roasting tin with some sea salt, black pepper, and a good glug of vegetable oil. And then I just stir them around with a wooden spoon and pop them into an oven. I then started chopping up the onions again, same way. You can see it's a really handy way of chopping the onions. 
and then I added them to a wok. You can do this in a frying pan if you'd like to, but I prefer to do it in the wok just because it gets everything cooking really fast. I seasoned the onions and then added in a chopped red bell pepper and a chopped yellow bell pepper and then just softened all that down in a wok, just making sure I stirred constantly. And then I added the corn mince. Of course, you can add real mince if you'd like to, but obviously we are vegetarian. Then I added in one chopped garlic clove and the taco seasoning mix, along with around, I'd say, three tablespoons of passata. And that is it, guys. I just served it up with the crispy roasted potatoes. I roasted the potatoes for around half an hour, and then all I did was just warmed up the soft shell tacos and popped everything into a bowl, and that is it. It is a super easy dinner. It takes around 10 to 15 minutes to cook in total, and it is so good. I just popped the soft shell tacos in a plate with some lovely cheese, the salsa, tomatoes, and the taco mix, and it is honestly delicious. One of the easiest and most tasty soft shell tacos ever. Okay, so today is Wednesday and I'm going to be making us a delicious vegetarian meatballs and spaghetti. It's an absolute classic. It's so, so good and we're going to have a garlic bread with it as well. So, I'm going to show you what you're going to need. Okay, so these are the ingredients you are going to need. The meatballs that we're using this evening are the Lyndon McCartney ones. We've had these before and they're absolutely delicious. You're going to need a little splash of red wine and some passata to make the tomato sauce. We're also going to add some thyme and some oregano. You need some garlic cloves, we're putting four garlic cloves in because we love garlic. You're going to need to saute a white onion down, add a chopped can of tomatoes, a can of chopped tomatoes, sorry, and some spaghetti. You can of course do it with linguine, tagnatelli, penne, fasilli, whatever pasta you've got. Super easy and absolutely delicious. Let's get cracking. Okay, for the spaghetti and meatballs, I popped the meatballs into a roasting tin with some sunflower oil and roasted them for around 10 minutes in a 200 degree oven. And then I just did my onion trick again, sliced up the white onions and then added that into a saucepan with some olive oil. So I just softened them down in a pan for around, I'd say five to six minutes and then added some salt and pepper, some oregano and some thyme. And then I added in the chopped garlic and a good glug of some delicious red wine. This just gives the sauce some amazing depth. I also added a tablespoon of tomato puree and just stirred all that together. And then I added in some passata and just made the most deliciously simple sauce. I also added in a bay leaf, this isn't an essential, it just gives a lovely depth of flavour. In the meantime I was then cooking the spaghetti and added that some seasoned water and then the meatballs were done. So I just popped those into the nice tomato sauce and stirred all those together. They will finish off cooking in the pan but I like to get them nice and charred. And once the spaghetti's had around, I'd say 8 minutes to cook, I just transferred that into the sauce. I didn't drain it just because the nice starchy sauce makes the most creamy sauce. And then I just dished up the spaghetti and meatballs. It is honestly that simple. I'd say start to finish, maybe 20 minutes. Finished off with a good shaving of parmesan and some olive oil. And as you can see, I'm absolutely loving that. Okay, so this is a lunch recipe. And this is something that is great to prep for the week ahead. You can pop it in the fridge and it keeps for up to three days, which is great. So this is our easy fridge salad. Not my recipe. It's a BBC Good Food one. And I found it from Anna, the Anna Edits. This is everything you're going to need. Okay, so these are the ingredients you are going to need. We have done a couple of substitutes because um, we didn't have a couple of things, but I will link the whole recipe down below if you want to follow it from a tea, but this is just what we have. So, we're going to use some couscous, uh, some sweet corn, the recipe calls for some tomatoes, and then for the dressing we've got tahini, honey, and olive oil, which we're going to mix with some lemon juice and zest. We've got a packet of seven rice and grains here, some mint, pomegranate, which we're going to use the seeds of, some feta, and some celery. And that is everything you're gonna need. Oh, and some almonds, which we need to toast. Okay, so I first started off by cooking the couscous. I did around a cup of couscous, and then I do it to two cups of water, and then to pop a lid on. And then the same with the grains and rice, just do that with around two tablespoons of water. You can do that in the microwave if you do have one, and cook that as well. And then I just chopped up the tomatoes and the celery, and added that into a bowl with the sweet corn. And then I also halved the pomegranate and just removed all of the seeds and bashed that into the bowl as well. You're gonna need quite a big serving bowl for this, guys. Then I grated in the zest of an orange. And then I juiced the orange into a jug and added two tablespoons of tahini and two tablespoons of honey. And then I also added three tablespoons of olive oil and just whisked all that together to make a beautiful dressing. And then I added in some finely chopped mint into the bowl along with some almonds that just need to toast. I just toasted those on a pan. 
and then I added in our grains. This is the rice and the couscous. I did leave it to cool before adding it in, but don't worry because it goes in the fridge, so it's absolutely fine. And then seasoned the salad dressing and gave that a taste, and then poured that all over the salad. I gave it one final stir and then added in the toasted almonds. This just gives it the most amazing texture. And then it was time to serve it up. I just like it as it is, but I crumble on some feta as well. And that is a delicious fridge salad. Super easy and so tasty. Okay, so today is Thursday and we are having a pie for dinner. We're gonna do some pie and some green veggies. It's a classic. I might have done the variant of this before and it's delicious. It's a leek and mushroom pie. Let me show you what you need. So there isn't a massive amount of ingredients needed for this one guys, we just need some mushrooms, these are just some chestnut mushrooms. We are obviously going to need some leeks, so we've got three leeks in here, we're going to sweat those down. We're also going to put some peas in there as well, some cream to make it like a nice creamy sauce, some puff pastry, oh also going to need two more things. You're also going to need some white wine and some whole grain mustard and we're serving it with some green beans. Okay, so it's time to trim the leeks. So I just top and tail the leeks and I give them a nice wash and then I just finely slice them. And then into a high sided saucepan, I add in some butter and olive oil and just make all that sweat around seven or eight minutes. And then I add in some salt and some whole grain mustard. And then once all that's cooked, I add a good splash of white wine and then I just cook off the alcohol and then add in the sliced mushrooms. And then I just stir all that together. Once the mushrooms have started to cook, I then add in around 100 grams of frozen peas. And then I add in the cream and it just makes the most delicious pie filling. I let that blip away for around 10 minutes on the stove before transferring it to a pie dish. And then I just roll out the puff pastry to the size of the base of the pie. And then I just lower it into the pie filling. I do let the pie filling cool before I do this, otherwise it can just make the pastry go nice and melty. I just cut a little bit in the top just to help some steam come out and pop that into a preheated oven around 200 degrees for I'd say 20 to 25 minutes until it's nice and golden brown. And that is the pie, it is ready to serve, it's absolutely delicious, the puff pastry has the most amazing texture and the filling is so nice and creamy, it's a really nice hearty dish and I just served that with some green beans. Oh and some gravy, obviously, always gravy. <laughs> okay so this is the last meal in our six midweek meals and today is a Sunday. We didn't film Friday and Saturday because we just had some super basic dinners but tonight we are having our allotment pie which is a vegetarian cottage pie not using mince but using corn. Zara's already getting the ingredients I'm going to show you everything you need. Zara's eating a tomato but I'm going to show you the ingredients what we need. Okay so these are all of the ingredients you're going to need for the mashed potato obviously you're going to need potatoes. You can do a mix of sweet or regular potatoes we're just using Morris Piper ones. We've got five potatoes. Then we're also going to pop some carrots in. These aren't looking the best. They were tiny carrots, but um, carrots nonetheless. We've got one white onion. We've got a big leek, some frozen peas, some vegetarian gravy granules and two stock cubes, some corn mince, and then we're serving it with some asparagus and some green beans. So that's it. All right, let's get cracking. Okay, so to start off, I just finely sliced up an onion and peeled some potatoes. And then I just cut the potatoes into chunks. And then in a saucepan, I sauteed the onion and I also sauteed some carrots, but they were peeled and then finely chopped. And then I added in a whole bag of corn mince. Then I also added in some thyme and just stirred all that together. Meanwhile, I was just cooking the potatoes. The potatoes need to cook for around 10 minutes. And then I added in some gravy granules, some vegetable stock, around 500 ml of water and some frozen peas. And then I just let all of that blip away. Once I seasoned it with salt and pepper for around 20 minutes until it went nice and thick and creamy. By that time the potatoes were cooked, so I just drained them in a colander. And then I added a good chunk of butter into a pan and then mashed it all up with a good splash of milk as well and I made the most amazingly creamy mashed potato. And then I seasoned it with salt and pepper. And then I just transferred the cottage pie, allotment pie filling into the pie dish and then topped it with some mashed potato. And then I got some of the rosemary sprigs from our garden and just popped that in the mashed potato and popped it into the oven. It was around 200 degrees and I cooked that for around 20 to 25 minutes until the potato went nice and crispy. And I just served that with some green beans and it was absolutely delicious. Again, a really nice comfort and dish, but so, so tasty. As you can see, I am very much enjoying it. <laughs> 
And that is everything guys, that is our six easy midweek meals and they are all vegetarian, super delicious, very easy to make and quite affordable too. I really hope you did enjoy this and if you did, as always, do give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to click subscribe and there will be plenty more midweek meals and recipe videos coming very soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in another video. Bye for now.